Hello, my name is Veronica and welcome to the Learning Lab episode number 47 using your corner punches on circles and ovals. Come on into the lab today and let me share with you a few interesting techniques for achieving a really eye-catching effect. Uh, there are a myriad of options on the market today for making circles and ovals and this one happens to be the Colossal. It comes with your template, this little foam piece for your cutting mat and also a special blade. You would simply take your paper, put it underneath, go from one end to the other because there are little tab places and continue on around and when you lift it off you have a cut oval. You can also go in between those and cut out uh, little rings and frames to go with your pieces. So if you have a colossal, don't toss it out. Another option would be the Fiskars shape cutters and these happen to be the same oval ones that I use on the cover of my journal. You get four of them for a total of eight because you can do the inside and the outside. When you're doing it just make sure the Fiskars is face up. You'll also need the shape cutting tool and you will remove from it um, this little piece which protects your blade and you'll also remove the orange piece. You'll have to make sure your blade is in alignment. Go around the inside holding down firmly on your template and when you're done you should have a nice oval for yourself. Now another option is this circle cutter and I know there are some other makers out there on the market who have one but this one is really it's neat. I use this glass mat that I purchased separately from this. This does come with its own mat and it was the one that I used before but if I cut on the glass it cuts like butter but there are little holes in here and you would just find the size that you want it. You want to use their numbers and then you would just go around and I usually do it a couple of times just to make sure it's completely cut out. Um, this is on ball bearing so it swings very easily and once you're done you have whatever size circle you want to make. And finally if you have a wish blade or a Cricut or a click and cut or the silhouette a lot of those templates come with circles on them. Just set it to whatever size you want and have a blast. Now I must admit, when I decided to use this on the cover of my journal, I had no idea, actually it never crossed my mind to think about whether or not they would come out evenly. I just punched it and they did. Doesn't always happen that way, so let me show you some examples of what could happen. So on here I use the double arches punch and you can see right there on the tip, I got this little cut edge, but since I happened to get it evenly all the way around, I didn't worry about it. And this was cut out of a circle that was uh, at four and a half. Next one was the cute little ladybug corner punch cut out of a circle that was three inches. And as you can see, I lost a little portion of her there when I tried to fit that in. This one is from the double arch punch. And it was cut on a circle that was five and one quarter. And it came out well enough that I'm not upset with it. This one is the holly leaves I think and it turned out pretty well I was pleased with it it was cut at four and a quarter and then here is also another, another one that I cut that was just freehand this one is the iron gate and when I finished I had these little pointy things so I just went around and cut and made them all flat now this one is my ladybug who turned out beautifully I have six of them on here and I cut it from three and a quarter inch circle this is another iron gate cut from a smaller circle, four and a fourth, and I did the same thing, except I punched this one more freehand, and I'll talk to you about what freehand versus non-freehand means. This is a two and three quarter inch circle. I got a little ambitious on this one. What I decided to do was punch the double arches, and when I got around to here, I realized I'm not going to have enough space to do two more without chopping off one. So I just took the family corner punch and put them in there. So I took the ladybug with the, oh, what do you call these? The super big uh, loopy ones. And um, that's what I got. I thought that was kind of cute too. Then, uh, I don't know, something about that ladybug was just loving her. But let's take a look at this. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those on there. And I'll talk to you also about why that works the maple leaf corner punch. I love how that turned out and uh, I got to 
a double loop. This was at four and three quarters. And here is the family punch. And I would not recommend going smaller than two and a quarter inches because your punch is going to get hung up in there. And what I did to be able to get mine to punch was I took a sticky note and put that on the very tip of it. And then that's what I was able to use to put into my punch and hold it and get it lined up so that I could see where I was punching. You could use tweezers, but your tweezers are going to get up under this little part and it's not going to be able to press down. So a little post-it note helped me to be able to hold that into place. That I lined up to punch came out perfectly. So let me flip this over and talk about what I did. I created a little grid for myself and I lined up the little boy going, the line going, or the girl, going straight through her head, down through the center of the parents. That's where I lined up my punch and went around and punched on every last one of those. And as you can see, I got an even punch going all the way around. Was I made a grid for myself and then I can take my circle, place it on top and kind of eyeball where I have my center. So to set up my grid, I cut a piece of paper to eight by eight and I lined it up on my mat. I did the center line here at four, my center line here. And then the next thing I did was to use these degree angle lines that they had provided. And I just went corner to corner on that. And it's pretty close to being the degree angle that I want. If not, you know, I'm not that serious about it because if it, I were, I would have out a compass and a protractor making sure that I got degrees correct it's not that serious to me so I I'm not gonna worry about it that much so once you get this done you can put your circle on the center then draw your lines through where you want and that's where you can punch let me quickly make some lines on this six and a half and I'll show you what I mean now because my grid is eight lines then it's going to give me eight punches around if you're using any number that's going to divide evenly into 360, which is the degree of the circle, you're going to be okay. And those are numbers 5, 6, 8, 9, and 10. So what I'm going to do here is slide it in. You don't need the wings out. Go right up to the tip of where I want this. And there's my line going straight through and give it a squeeze down. Then I'm going around to my next line, line it up, and do the exact same thing. My only focus is making sure that I am centered on the line and that I am at the edge of my paper. So after punching those two, you can see that I have a little space there, but I can go back later and cut that across. I'm going to go on around and come back and show you the finished piece. And this one is going to be the final punch. Again, I just want to make sure I have everything that I need lined up there in the center along that line and give it a squeeze. So here's what I'm left with. If you want to keep this, you most certainly can. Looks pretty decent to me. If you don't want to keep that, just bring in your scissors. Decide where you want to make your cut. If you want to keep the little arch, then you can keep the little arch. And if you're saying, I don't want to keep the little arch, I want to go straight across to the next one, then you can do that. It's going to give you a totally different look to your piece. I'm not going to make you um, watch me cut that, but just to show um, the contrast of the difference that you're going to get. Now let me do one for you that doesn't necessarily need to be measured out three quarter inch circle doesn't have to be marked or lined up and what I'm going to do is just place this in and make sure my tip is just right there at the edge give it a squeeze go around again I'm just gonna make sure this is lined up but the preceding hole that I just punched and that my edge here is right at the tip of my paper give that a squeeze bring it out and you can start to see your pattern going around and you would just continue it in that same fashion. You have to stay on the arc. That is your main focus. And getting as close as you can to that previously cut circle. Because of the nature of this punch, I don't think it's going to matter that much if it's not spot on every time because after all they're holly leaves and these were not designed to go around a circle. They were designed to go around a square. So having a different option for them just multiplies 
the use of your punches. Now I'm here at the end and you're going, uh-oh, but because of the nature of the punch, I can actually get away with just putting this in and punching. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Love that. Thank you for joining me in the lab today. Please remember to visit my blog at inkillusions.blogspot.com where you're going to find a lot more information and inspiration. Until then.